actually the uh, I think it's Mufti Muhammad Shafi he uh, quoted an Urdu poem in describing this attitude of a weak a person of weak character who fails to see their own weakness and the only way they can find to cover their own weakness is to constantly find weakness in others that's the best way they can cover up their own weakness so he wrote, i'm just going to cite one part of the urdu poem don't get too happy auron ki azmat kya jane kam zaf jo insa hote hain what that basically means is how the those who are low of character themselves how can they ever appreciate the goodness of others all they see in others are flaws when a person all they see in others is flaws either to their face or behind their back you know what that means they themselves are of a low character they don't see the good in people they only see the flaws in people and that doesn't speak of the other more than it does of their own selves may allah protect us from such attitudes we'll go straight to the comments of a great linguistic mufassir az zamakhshari who wrote the book al kashaf he says al humaz al kasr kasr in arabic is used for fracturing something or breaking something or cracking something or tearing something apart and it's used in literature to talk about when one person speaks to another in a way that they're attempting to break them not physically but psychologically they're trying to break their dignity or fracture their 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 you know their sense of self-worth that sort of thing you know and th- this is the word used linguistically to describe the attitude of humaz and he says lumaz at-ta'an lumaz is basically sarcastic tone sarcasm against someone else and by the way sarcasm is important because or important to understand because sarcasm can be a compliment but meant as an insult so you could say to someone you're such a genius but what you're really saying is you're so stupid right and you can get and you say why would you talk to me like that no 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 i'm saying you're a genius right and so they feel like no they didn't do anything wrong and they can cover their tracks but really allah azza wa jalla knows what was meant by them when they said it and more often than not the person they are insulting or being sarcastic against also knows and it's also recorded in their heart wa nahwuhuma and something very similar for you to understand al-la'na wa dhahika meaning cursing someone and laughing at someone would be included according to zamakhshari inside humaza cursing someone meaning using foul language against someone that's al-la'na uh, or or you know literally cursing them like you know making dua against them that, that sort of thing and secondly al-dhahika which is to laugh at them to poke fun at them and to use a condescending tone now smiling at someone is different and laughing at someone is different and i think we're smart enough to know the difference you know and you know you a lot of times you know what the really expert criminal mind does they laugh at someone and then when the person is insulted you say wow well, you don't want me to smile what's the matter do you have something against happiness so <laughs> they have this attitude where they think they can get away with it simply because you know uh, they're playing a smart uh, card So now the, the 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 comment to understand here is when someone is insulted and they make wail against the person who offended them. But in this surah, that person is not crying wail. Who's actually saying wail? Allah is. Meaning, instead of the makrub, instead of the one who has been anguished, using the word wail, Allah comes to his defense, and Allah curses the person who had offended him. How Allah. This is a very serious thing. Who are these people that Allah condemns with wail? Hum al-mashaa'oona bin namima ibn Abbas. These are the people who walk around, you know, uh, informing and tattling and, you know, uh uh ratting out people constantly and constantly, you know, going around and doing so. Al-mufarriquuna bayna al-ahibba. These are people that cause division between those who love each other. And na'ituna lin-nas bil-'ayb. Those who are constantly describing people with flaws. the way they call people and talk about people oh you're talking about that short guy over there oh yeah him yeah i mean the, the words they use are constantly describing people in a condescending tone oh you're talking about that really annoying one yes i know him right that's how they talk about people na'ituna lil aib you know constantly describing people with uh flaws this is the again the description of uh ibn abbas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa'lam wa'lam anna jami'a hadhihi al wujuh mutaqaribah This is uh, Razi's commentary. Know that all of these facets, all of these different descriptions that are being offered are very close to one another. Raji'atun ila aslin wahid. They are all they all come back to one essential concept. Wa huwa at-ta'n and that's you know uh, uh, condescending sarcasm wa izhar al-'ayb and to expose somebody's flaws. Thumma hadha ala qasamain. And thereafter you should know that this happens in two ways. Fa innahu imma an yakuna bil jaddi 
it can happen by an actual effort, meaning somebody is actually spending time and making a proper, you know, exhausting their mental capacity in doing so. كَمَا يَكُونُ عِنْدَ الْحَسَدِ وَالْحَقَدِ the, the way it happens in uh, jealousy, hasad, the jealousy that is meant to harm someone, and also haqad, which is animosity. وَإِمَّا أَنْ يَكُونَ بِالْحَزَلِ And it can also happen playfully. In other words, a person doesn't actually have evil intent to become hamaz and lamaz, as you will, or humaza or lumaza, but they just do it kind of jokingly, haphazardly, casually. كَمَا يَكُونُ عِنْدَ عند السخرية والإضحاك as it happens when you're just making jokes or laughing around إما أن يكون في أمر يتعلق بالدين he says another way of looking at it is it can happen in any matter that has to do with the religion in other words you're poking fun at somebody's religious behavior religious appearance uh, you know religious knowledge etc etc and one of the side things to note the scholars comment on this very sensitively like you know nowadays it's become that we're living in strange times. The vast majority of Muslims don't act or look very Muslim at all. So those that are trying to hold on to even some remnant of the religion, uh, maybe in their appearance, in their speech, in their social circles, etc., etc., if they even show some reflection of religion, you automatically become the, the object of ridicule within certain Muslim circles. You are the object of ridicule, not by those who disbelieve, but by those who apparently believe. And when that happens, when somebody, for example, casually says, Oh, that guy with the, you know, the extra long beard. And somebody making fun of somebody's beard. Or somebody's making fun of somebody's hijab or jilbab or something like that. Understand that when you're making some fun of someone's beard, you are making fun of, not of the beard, but of something that mimics the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's not a light matter. That person is not growing a beard because, you know, it's a fashion statement. This is him or her, this, this person is trying to mimic the Messenger of Allah. And when, when you mimic or ridicule someone who's wearing a hijab, then that is not a person, you know, because they come from a certain country or they're trying to show off their religiosity. We, we assume that they're doing so because Allah commanded as such. We assume that. We assume that they're following the spirit of, you know, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. When the ayat came down, she was in the kitchen and she was cooking. And she heard the messenger walking towards the house and through the window she heard the ayat of hijab come down and she tore her apron off and covered her head right away. Right? And it's that spirit that these people are following. So making fun of that is making, it's the same as Ummahatul Mu'mineen. If you disagree with somebody's opinion and you don't think for example wearing the turban is that important. But they do. And they wear the turban. Why do you think they wear the turban? Out of love of the messenger, right? Are there narrations that he وسلم, wore a turban? Yes, so when you make fun of that turban because you, you know, this guy looks like, what I, I won't even use certain words. When you do, oh, it's so narrow-minded, this and that, and you know, they dress like this, that or the other. Even if you don't agree with it, the fact that they do it out of the love of the Messenger والسلام, should be enough for you to respect it. And the Sahaba would do, sometimes they would do the most illogical of things. That you would never assume that they're logical, but we still call them acts of love. You know, like for example, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he would be traveling, and sometimes he would just go like this. He would just lean over on his ride. And the other sahabi would say, why, why do you do that? There's nothing there, he just leans over. He says, there used to be a tree here. And when the messenger used to pass through here, he used to lean over. Right? So he does that out of love of the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. Right? Now for you and for somebody else, that might be silly. But this is an act of love and we respect it. We, just, we leave it at that. We don't touch it beyond that. We have to be careful about these kinds of things and be sensitive to you know, the, the uh, devotion that people show. Anyhow, so, إِمَّا أَنْ يَكُونْ فِي أَمْرٍ يَتَعَلَّقْ بِالدِّينِ It can be in a matter that has to do with the religion. وَهُوَ مَا يَتَعَلَّقْ بِالصُّورَةِ أَوِ الْمَشِي Or it could also have to do with their, you know, their appearance. Meaning you're making fun of somebody's appearance. Or the way they walk, أو الجلوس, or the way they sit, or the company they sit in. وأنواعه كثيرة, and this takes many, many, many forms. ثم إظهار الغيب في هذه الأقسام الأربعة قد يكون لحاضر. And there, thereafter, this exposing of the flaws in these four different categories that he just mentions, it could happen with someone who's in front of you. وقد يكون لغائب, and it can happen for someone who's behind your back. وعلى التقديرين فقد يكون باللفظ. And in both of these situations, it can happen with words. وَقَدْ يَكُونَ بِإِشَارَةٍ بِإِشَارَةِ الرَّأْسِ وَالْعَيْنِ It could be even by the gesture of the head, just your facial expression, or your eyes, وَغَيْرِهِمَا And even other than them. وَكُلُّ ذَلِكَ دَاخِلْ تَحْتَ النَّهِي وَالزَّجْرِ This is what I started with back, way back, when we started this verse. And all of this is included in what Allah forbids and what Allah scolds these people on.
So be careful of these things. وَلَمَّا كَانَ الرَّسُولُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَعْظَمَ النَّاسِ مَنْ صَبًا فِي الدِّينِ And it, as it is known already that the Messenger والسلام, is the greatest of the people in far, as far as his rank in the religion. كَانَ الطَّعْنْ فِيهِ عَظِيمًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Then making sarcasm in regards to him is a, magnet, is a thing of great magnitude as far as Allah is concerned. فَلَا جَرَمَ قَالْ So there is no, there's no surprise that he said, وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةٍ لُمَزَةٍ 